So today I want to show you a few ideas you can try with the sequential controller from synthesizers.com. It might look like a relatively simple sequencer, but there are a few interesting things you can try with it. The first thing I want to show you is adding some space to your sequences. So here, for example, I have it set to three sequences of eight steps. Right, I have the first sequence here, the first bank sequencing pitch or sequencing palette. Then two more sequencing modulations, so one for the decay, one for the timbre. And now for adding some space, instead of having it repeating um, all the time, we can use, for example, the start and stop buttons. Right here we have start and stop. So if I stop the sequence, right, the sequencer will stop and I can start it again. Right, and have a look, it will start from the first step. So it will restart, but again, instead of having it restart each time, we can have it continue from the last step it was on. And this in VCV, we do this from the right click menu, run mode continuous. So now if I start, it will just continue from the last step, right? So now I will stop it, it's on step seven. If I start it again, it will start from step seven. Right, so it will not reset, it will just continue from where it were before. Right, so for example, we can use probability to do this for us. In this case, I'm using chances from count modula. And um, chances will add probability in this case to the clock. So once I will use this to trigger the start and once the stop. Right, so we have a bit more movement, a bit more space in the sequence. It's not always repetitive eight-step sequence. By the way, if you want to do this in hardware with the .com modules, um, you can use something like the gate math. It has the um, random mode, as you can see here. Um, I'm saving the gate math to a dedicated video, so I prefer to use, in this case, chances. Now, another way of adding space is to use the go button. Right, in this case, I have the sequencer set to one sequence of 24 steps. Right, this will sequence uh, dark energy through some delay. And now we have here the go button and go input. And as long as I hold the go button, it will run. When I let go, it will stop. And again, in this case, it will restart when I hit it again. Right, but again, we can change this in the right click menu, run mode, continuous. And now basically we can gate this sequence. Right, so again, as long as the button is held or as long as the gate is high in the input. So in this case, I'm going to use a gate sequencer to do this for me. I have here the nibble sequencer from count modular. So this will gate the sequence. Right, so again, I'm using here a one sequence of 24 steps to sequence speech, but we still get the individual outputs from the banks. So uh, bank two and bank three are modulating um, dark energy. I have here also a bass. I have again the sequential controller sequencing two oscillators in this case, going through a filter and a chorus. Another way of adding space is by using the sequencer in one shot mode. Here I have it set to 16 steps. You can do this either by using the set end and set the end point at 16, or again in VCV rec, it's all in the right click menu. We can choose the end stage to 16. So now I have a 16 step sequence and we can change here the mode instead of continuous, we can set this to once. Right, so now whenever it receives a start signal, it will run for 16 steps and then it will stop. Right, so we have a one shot 16 step 
sequence and in this case instead of doing this manually I'm going to use a clock division of 16. By the way this is not a clock module, this is the Bay module from Venom that is just teleporting the clock signals from the clock so there are no cables going everywhere, right? So I just have the clock divided by 16 going to the start input. Right, and it will trigger the 16 um, one-shot sequence. By the way, the voice that I have here is uh, two VCV, uh, VCO units um, from Venom, not VCV, VCO units. And one is modulating the other. There is also some modulation here for the envelope and some delay. Right, so again, we have a 16-step one-shot sequence here. And we have also a um, random mode. Right, so in this case I have an FM voice with two FM operators, let me unmute this. Right, in this case I have the sequence set to 10 steps, again in the right click menu you can do this quite easily, just set it to 10. Right, again it's set to once mode, so it will just be a one shot sequence. In this case I'm using by the way a clock division of 12 just so it doesn't sit together with the other sequence. Right, and now again in the right-click menu, and this will work also in hardware, not in the right-click menu of the hardware, but also in hardware there's a way to activate this. We have random mode that will choose steps randomly and also will have a random length, but it will all stay inside these uh, 10 steps. Right, so I'm activating random, have a look what happens. Right, so it runs randomly now. Sometimes a shorter sequence, sometimes a longer sequence. But again, the 10th step is the end, it will not go beyond 10. Right, now this sequencer, by the way, is also an end of cycle output, the done output that we can use to um, activate or to uh, start all sorts of different things in your patch. Um, in my case, I'm going to do this, I'm going to use this to activate or to trigger chords. I have here the chord key. Um, I'm sequencing the chords with the ADDR sequencer, right? The voice itself is the classic VCO filter delay. So I'm going to trigger this whenever the random sequence ends. And again, it has also a random length, so it will always be at different times. It will trigger the chords, just like this. Right, so this is also something you can do. I have here also a bass. I'm using the bass module from Sively to extract the bass note from the chords. Uh, two oscillators, again from .com, filter, chorus. adding variation is by using the add input. This input will add voltage to the sequence, so it's possible to transpose things and change the sequence. Here, for example, I have a seven-step sequence from the sequential controller. Again, in VCV it's quite easy. In the right-click menu you can set the end stage, I have it set to seven. And um, this is sequencing kick all with some delay. And I also have here the ADDR sequencer, it's set with a five step sequence, so I can use this to transpose the sequence again through the add input. And we get some variation, of course the original sequence has seven steps, the ADDR is just five, so they will meet each other at different points in time. So I get some variation pitch-wise. Of course, we can also do this randomly. In this case, I have an eight-step sequence. It's sequencing two oscillators going through a bandpass filter, again, from the same collection. Right, and in this case, I'm using random voltage with noise and the sample and hold, again, also from .com. So we get more random variation in this case.
right? So we have eight steps, and then every now and then, according to the clock division that I'm using here, it will be transposed randomly up and down. Now, of course, this means also, uh, also that we can easily mix sequences together. So here I have another example, right? In this case, I have, again, an eight-step sequence on the sequential controller and a seven-step sequence on slips, again, with some variation because slips has variation built in. And I'm mixing them via the add input, right? So we get, again, eight and seven. They will be mixed into a sort of a macro sequence. Um, I'm using here two VCO units, again, as my voice with some delay. Also some drums, I'm using the gate sequencer to sequence uh, Tremor FM as a kick and hi-hats. And I have here a bass with the Euclidean sequencer from Count Modula and again another kick hole. thing we can do is we can drive the sequencer with an oscillator and add movement to the timing. So here, for example, I'm sequencing the FM operator. Right, I have it set to three rows of eight steps. So I have here pitch and gates. And as my clock, instead of using a dedicated clock module, I'm using another um, oscillator, right in this case, again, from the same collection. It's set to low. Right, so the rate of the oscillator is quite low, and this is triggering as an external oscillator source, triggering the sequencer. And now, in turn, we can use the sequencer to sequence the frequency or the rate of this uh, oscillator clock, right? So I will use the second um, bank here, the second output. This will go to the frequency modulation input. Uh, in this case, it's linear frequency modulation. And now I can add modulation to the rate. Right, so now we have rhythmic variation, variation in timing. And again, we have now this clock that we can use to clock also other sequencers. So here I have another sequencer, right, that I'm using. I have it set to 14 steps. And in this case, it's opening a filter. Right, so it's sequencing the filter for the oscillator that I'm using here. And of course, this means also that we can use the sequencer as an oscillator, as a voice by itself. So here I have it um, also clocked or driven by an oscillator, but in this case it's set to audio rates, right? It's not set to low, it's set to higher frequency. And as my waveforms, I'm using um, both the outputs and also the gate output of the third band. And you can see the result here on the scope. This is the waveform we are getting right after the filter. So we use the um, sequencer as an oscillator, as a voice by itself. And in this case, again, I'm using another um, sequencer to sequence the filter. Have another sequencer running again with the same wonky clock that we set up before. Right, in this case it's running randomly, so we have variation in timing and also random pitch. Right, again with the oscillator and the bandpass filter. So you can see that even if this sequencer looks a bit basic at first, it's actually pretty deep and packed with unique features that I hope you will go and explore further. Thank you again for watching. Cheers.
Thank you.